the first thing that we are going to cover is finding the um, finding the mean, and it's very simple. Uh, and I know I said it a lot in class, but I'm, I'm always going to say it. It's very simple. So all we're doing, all we're doing for finding mean, I'm going to write it over here. There will be times when I am uh, standing in front of the camera, but I'll show you. We're finding mean, and the way that we find mean is, like I said, it's very simple. We're going to start by finding the sum, right? The sum, and you're going to see what I'm talking about after I write this out, but this is very important. If you have a pencil, you may want to write this down. Um, finding the sum, and we're going to divide the sum by the total. We're going to divide the sum by the total, and if this doesn't make sense right now, I'm going to break it down really quickly, and um, like I said, I think it's very simple. Our sum, we're going to take a set, uh, uh, um, a set of numbers out of a, a data set, excuse me. So we're going to take, uh, to make it simple, one, two, three, four, and five. We're going to find the sum of these numbers here. So we're going to just go one plus two plus three plus four plus five, right? And then we're going to divide it we're going to divide it by that total, okay? We're just going to divide it by the total. How, num how many numbers is that? There are five numbers there. One, two, three, four, five divided by the total. Five total numbers, okay? And that would be... There we go. That's it. It's like I said, it's that simple. It won't be always that easy because you know, in our on our uh, in our in our textbooks and things like that, the numbers are different. On our uh, on online, the numbers are different. But in a base level, that's all it is. You're taking the sum of your numbers and dividing it by the total of your numbers, right? And that's it. That's finding me. So. I know I can't say, hey, well, who has any questions? What are your questions? Uh, if you do have questions, like I said, you can always reach out to me on um, uh, uh, through email and stuff like that. So just go ahead and email me if you have any questions. If you don't, and this is helpful, that's great. Um, also, if you have questions, you can just post it in the video because this is going on YouTube. Um, so we just finished me. Now, the next thing that we have to find, after we find mean, our next number, uh, next number, our next word, uh, is median. Median. Um, so the way that we find our median uh, is simple as well. I think it's simple. We can take our same numbers again. And I just want y'all to remember for median, median, it's just the middle. That's it. It's just the middle. So what you can just do, go ahead and write your numbers out in order. And remember, we have put our numbers one, two, three, four, five. That was our numbers. Which number is in the middle? It's just like that simple. Boom. There's our median. I know like that silence was for somebody to ask me a question. And the question that I think would have been asked, well, how do we find the median if, because this it's odd, right? One, two, three, four, five. Five is an odd number, right? Uh, but what happens if we need to find the median and we have an even number in our data set? And that's very simple. We're just going to throw a six on here. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to take our two numbers in the middle, right? Add those up, seven, and one divided by two. Seven divided by two, uh, yeah, you can't answer. 3.5, three and a half, three and five tenths, so be it, right? And that's it when we come to finding our medium. The next, um, the next thing that we're going to move on to is 
solving for range. All right, uh, I have it written up right here. And range is simple as well. You only have to do one, two, three things, okay? Here are the three things that you have to do. First thing that you have to do is put your numbers in order. Yeah, I changed it from one, two, three, four, five, uh, and six, okay? And I'll do one, two, three, four, five, uh, and one, two, three, four, five, six for people who, just, just to show you, uh, just a, bit, a different set of numbers. So basically to solve for range though, all you have to do is take your greatest number here, which is 12 in this case, grab a different marker. 12, hopefully this red shows up, oh, that's bright. Take this 12 here and this eight here and subtract them. So to find range, we take our greatest value and our lowest value and subtract. So, so our range is four. 12 minus eight is four. Now, like I said, I'll show you the other one with one, two, three, four, and five, right? We're gonna take our largest number and it's key, it's key, it's key, it's key that you take your largest number. I think that it helps if you go ahead and put your numbers in order. So do that. Take your one here. Five minus one. And this set of numbers, our range, eh, that's funny. I promise you that was not on purpose. Our range is four. And again, for the one, two, three, or one to six, basically, we can take, I'm not going to write them all out, but you can take your six minus one, uh, get you your five. So in a set of numbers where you have your lowest number being one and your highest number being six, you do six minus one. And again, for range, it's highest minus lowest, and that gives you your range. The next thing that we're going to be covering is quartiles, and quartiles uh, takes the actual word that you're listening to, quarter, and taking your data, data set and uh, breaking it into four parts because, you know, quarter, four, one-fourth. Um, so we're going to be doing that. It's a, This one's going to be slightly uh, tricky to find these numbers because you're not just necessarily dividing your numbers by four. And I'll show you what I mean by that in, um, right now. So uh, let me write that up here on the board. So we have quartile, and again, I know, I know, I know, I know that I say um, that you're taking that number and you're not just necessarily dividing by four, and there's a very, a very simple reason, because we're not looking for a quarter, we're looking for quartiles, and that's just a, like an individual point uh, between these numbers that we have in our data set. So I'm going to go all the way to 12, I put 19. Huh, I'm dumb. So I'm going to go to 12 here so you can see what I mean. If you were to divide 12 by 4, you'd get 3, right? And you could say, all right, well, then my next one is here. And then here, right? However, when you take these numbers this way, when you're looking for quartiles, you're not looking for numbers in this sense, like, okay, three is a uh, four, uh, six is a four, nine is a four, 12 is a four. No, that's not it. Because we're actually looking for 
specific points in this uh, set of numbers. You can look at your quartiles as like, um, like, like I said, specific points. So the easiest thing that I'd say do is to break this down in half. If you break, and I'm going to use red to show you um, what I'm doing here. And we're going to have the same number on each side, right? So we have six on this side, six on this side, right? The thing is, this middle number, the median here, the median, it there is no there is no number there. It's um, between six and seven, so we have to take our six plus our seven and divide it by two. Six plus seven divided by two. That's um, thirteen divided by two, which is six point five. So our uh, quartile two would be six point five, right? Then to find uh, Q1 and Q3, and then I'm gonna talk to you about Q4 after I, after we find uh, one and two. But we're gonna do the same thing here. We have all these numbers here on both sides. To find Q1, it's the same thing. You find your median, and I use black this time, but it's fine. We have three on this side, three on this side for this one. We're gonna take three and four Divided by two, seven divided by two is 3.5. So Q1 would be 3.5. And then we do the same thing here, nine and 10, um, 19. Nine point five, Q3 is 9.5. Now, when we're talking about quartiles, I want y'all to understand if they ever ask you for your fourth quartile, if they ever ask you for your fourth quartile, it's always the max value. Q4, Q4, whatever your biggest number is. So next saw was me, find our quartiles with even numbers, right? Even numbers were different than if it was an odd number. Again, if it was odd, you still, first thing you need to do is get your numbers in order. So I'm going to change our number from 12 because 12 is an even number and I'm going to turn it to an odd number and just add a number, make it 13, all right? So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. I'm starting to run out of room, all right? So there's our data set, right? The next thing that we have to do still becomes finding the median first. And it's always key to me to find the median first. Because now we, we can't take our 13 and try to divide it by 4 because we're still looking for quartiles. We're, looking for, we're not trying to find a quarter. We're trying to find the quartile. Now, what I say here, again, find the median. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm pointing at seven to show you that this is the median. Median, one, two, three, four, five, six. On both sides of the seven, there are six numbers, okay? So we know that this is our median. What did I just say about our median? Our median here, when we're talking about quartiles, is Q2, right? Now we can go from this set up here to going into solving it as if it was a even number. So now all we have to do here is find Q1, and then here, find Q3. The way that we do that, we're going to find the median number of these first six numbers. The middle between three and four, that still, still is seven divided by two, which gives us our Q1 as 3.5, right? Our next thing that we're going to do, we're going to go solve for Q3. Same thing, one, two, three, find the middle, that's 10 and 11. That's 21 divided by two, right? And that gives us Q3 equals 10 and a half, 10.5. And if you remember what I was saying about Q4, Q4 is always the what? The uh, largest number in our data set. So we can just circle third, 13 and say, Q4.
and that's it. So there was one thing that I did not um, do that I that I I feel that I should let y'all know. So in this case, let me think of the number that I would need to have. Um, so let's say we had fifteen instead. I do this quickly. Here four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. In fifteen, we're gonna do it. We're gonna take the same steps that we just took. We're gonna find the number that's in the middle. It should one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. In fifteen, we're gonna do it. We're gonna take the same steps that we just took. We're gonna find the number that's in the middle. It should one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So yeah, uh, Q2 will be eight. Notice now that we have odd numbers on both sides of our uh, Q2 or of our quartile two. We have odd numbers. It this this way makes finding Q1, um, Q3, and Q4. Q4, of course, is always going to be the easy one to find. Um, but this does make if they're e odd on both sides, it makes it a lot easier because now because we have this set of numbers here uh, being odd, all we have to do is find the number that's the median. So in this case, there's our Q1, same thing here. So we have Q3 here, Q4 here, and Q1 there. So what I'm, what I'm trying to get y'all to see is I went from median, 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 okay? The last thing that we're gonna cover for today, or for this video at least, is actually interquartile range or I Q R don't really have that much space to go ahead and write it out but it's interquartile range the way that we find these and I left these two examples up there so you can see exactly what I'm doing and I want you to remember some of those terms that I use like Q1 Q2 Q3 and also Q4 but for interquartile range you really it really matters if you've got these numbers set up correctly and you have done your math correctly. So we'll do we'll do this one first, uh, the the top one. To find the interquartile range, all we're actually doing is taking, and I'm writing it big. That's it. Q3 minus Q1. In this case, it would be 12 minus 4 giving us 8, or 8 being our I, Q, R, right? For this bottom one, it would be the same thing. We're going to take our Q3, which was 10 and a half, minus 3 and a half. That's 7. And please note, I know that it looks like Q2 and Q2 up here uh, will always be IQR. No, that is not true. IQR will not always be Q2. That just, like, as I did the math, I was like, oh, that's what that's going to be. No, that won't always be the case. So please don't get that in your head. If you didn't, good job. Good on you. Anyway, that's it for today. Um, or again, not today, this video, because you may have to watch another one. Um, but that's it.